Welcome, it is Friday Night Live and we're glad to be together again. Make sure that you tell us where you're coming from. I don't know about you guys, but I have been enjoying the beautiful weather that we've been having. I don't know what it's like where you're at, if it's kind of starting to get a little bit cooler or if it's still in the dead heat of summer or not, but where I'm at is it's starting to kind of get a little bit cooler. Like mornings and evenings are a little cooler than they were in July or earlier in August. So starting to feel it, but I'm going on a nice big hike tomorrow. It's gonna to be super fun going up to the North Cascades and we're gonna to go to a place called Hidden Lake. Super excited about that, doing that with a nephew. What are you guys up to? Love, love, love for uh, you to tell us what you're up to. So here's the deal. Tonight I'm gonna paint a uh, painting from a porch. I was driving away from a little cool beach that I found and it's like through these fields and there's some farms and one of these farmhouses had this really beautiful porch and I could, I could see from my car and my wife was driving and I was like taking pictures and stuff because this porch had these beautiful flowers. So I'll show you kind of the scene. This is what it's gonna look like right here. Um, and this is the deal. So we, we're gonna have you text the word patio to our number here to, to win this um, tonight, which is funny because we're actually not gonna have you win the painting, but we are gonna give away uh, a, a Blick gift card tonight. Because here's the deal. I need my paintings right now because I'm going to be doing a couple shows coming up. I've got a pretty decent sized show in October. So we're not, I'm not actually gonna give the painting away. So Peter might need to edit the, <laughs> the, the text, but we are giving away um, a gift card for Blick Art Materials. So you'll be able to get a gift card, 50 bucks, and you'll be able to go get whatever art supplies that you want. So anyways, that's the deal tonight. And that'll probably be the deal for the next uh, couple weeks as I'm trying to build up a few paintings. Now, I'll probably take these paintings when I'm done with them here and I'll, I'll work on them after the back. But that's why I'm not giving these ones away, just so you know. Now, as far as materials tonight, if you're painting along and you wanna know, I always uh, have been using titanium white. This is cadmium yellow light. This is cadmium orange. This is quinacridone red unless you're using Liquitex, and this would be called quinacridone crimson. This is ultramarine blue, uh, this is Mars black, and this is actually called Vancouver gray, it's a neutral gray. And I'm of course using my favorite brushes, which are Princeton Catalyst brushes. They're all flats, they range from size four to size 12. I have size 16, but I don't really use it in this small of a painting. Um, and that's about all that I have to say about that, but give us a shout out, tell us where you're coming from tonight, and we'd love to hear from you. So I'm going to get started on this beautiful scene, and if you have questions, let me know, because I, I may not just tell you everything, so you might have to answer it. Because this is not so much a teaching time, if you want to learn how to paint from me, then come to Acrylic University, that's what we do there. This is more of a hangout time and we'll jump right into that because Peter's right here with me, so he'll read out where you're from. All right, we got Patricia Young from Southeast Alaga. Uh, Alaga. Alaga. All right. So, Patricia, uh, thanks for being here. Soggy here all summer. Yeah. Um, Alejandro Fine Art says, I found out about you through Cole Gallery. I know the owner. Um, Chris Didn't, Finn, oh, right? awesome. Hi from Colorado. Annie, hello from Edmonds. Awesome, awesome. Um, Mary D, made it tonight from Camino. Doug Bremen, we used to Sweet. Oh, Mish. Sweet. Um, Tracy Gordon from Ontario. Diana Greenman from Montana. Sweet. Um, Matthew Kelly from Sohomish. John L says, hi, Jed and Peter. All right, John L. I had a good conversation with John L tonight because she called to talk to Peter, and I, of course, jumped on the phone and tried to talk to her and see, I was testing her to see what she was going to be doing tonight. I was going to be so sad, but she said she was going to be watching. So, hey, John L, I told you I'd give you a shout out. <laughs> uh, how to win friends and influence people by Jed Dorsey. <laughs> that plagiarism? 
<laughs> oh, oh yeah. No, it's more like the opposite of what I do. Mm -hmm. um, Patricia says hello from New Jersey. All right. Um, Zoe Zotrope. Hey, Jed. Helen Canada is here under Zoe Zotrope. Huh? Helen? Zoe? Helen? Oh, Helen. Yeah, that, that would be it. Okay, yeah. nice. Cool. Um, Lynn says hello from St. Albert or St. Albert, Alberta. Nice, nice. Um, That's Renee's stopping grounds. Jerry Edison from Everett. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's all we got so far. Awesome. Dennis Redman from New York City. New York City. Nice. Now that just reminds me of the Pace Picante sauce commercial from when I was young. It was like, oh, where's that? Where's that salsa made? And they, they're like, well, Pace Picante sauce is made in El Paso, Texas. And they're like, the, the cook, it's like these cowboys, and the, 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 one of the cowboys is like, oh, it doesn't matter where it's made. And then they're like, sure it does. You know, you got to have the real legit stuff. And so then they read off. They're like, well, where's, where's, your, where's your salsa from? And he goes, well, let's see. He looks on the back, and it's New York. And they go, New York City? And the, the, <laughs> that grizzled old cowboy says, get a rope. <laughs> That's all it is. Get a rope. We're going to hang him. Anyways, New York City in the house. I've only been there twice. Want to go back. Want to go back. So how's everybody doing tonight? Peter, how are you doing tonight? Let me get your answer. I'm good. I'm hungry. What? <laughs> I I thought you were just eating. I was, and I'm still hungry. Oh, okay. <laughs> but no, we're yeah, that's fair. These awesome chicken sandwiches. Um, yeah. You need to go get another one. I'm not gonna eat mine because I actually we went to Willow is in a she's she's taking um she's taking gymnastics so she has been for a long time but she just moved into like this more more i don't know it's like a bigger commitment kind of thing and so she's she's actually going for three hours three times a week and today was her first one and um so i went up because i was kind of excited to see what it would be like and plus we could just i was just working on my computer while i was up there but uh it was really fun but it was like their practices from 11. I think we left here at like 10:50 or something like that, 10:45, and her practices from 11:30 till 2:30. You know, which of course is like right over lunchtime. So I didn't eat anything, and uh, I came home and I was really hungry, and then I ate a bunch, and it was like this really weird hour, like, you know, four o'clock, three o'clock, something like that, 3:30. So that's why I'm not hungry. So you can have my sandwich. Go for it. Sounds good. Um, <laughs> I was going to ask about that. Jen and I had this weird, when I was living here, we had a weird balance of sharing food. Kind <laughs> of. Um, Elise Tenberg here from CDA. Well, last week, bro, I'm so glad because Renee had guarded the food from you. Mm -hmm. She said you were going to eat the rest of it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Because okay. it was shepherd's, shepherd's pie, pie, bro. And yeah, shepherd's yeah. pie... I don't know. Hey, I just got to say this. I don't know if you guys are like Shepherd's Pie fans, but me and Peter are like two big Shepherd's Pie fans. And so last week, Renee made that big thing of Shepherd's Pie, but it wasn't quite big enough for both of us. I mean, we both ate some, but Peter would have eaten more. And But thankfully, Renee guarded it. He, she was like, no, I don't think Jed's <laughs> had it yet. So luckily, or else I would have come out and I would have been like, oh man, where'd that Shepherd's Pie go? Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's funny. Just speaking about, you know, like, yeah. Um, Aliza Tenberg says, here from CDA. Oh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Ah. I used to live in Coeur d'Alene. It's beautiful. CDA. CDA. Yeah. Is that what you call it? CDA. Some people do, yeah. I've heard really? Um, okay. Jan Baker says, hi from Marysville. Hey, back from Camino. Yep. Um, Marie, hi from Texas. Janet from Byron, Georgia. Colleen from Oklahoma. Christina Anderson from Wizard Lake, Alberta. Nice. Yeah. Creative Ken is back. He's been here a few weeks in a row. Hello from Alabama. Nice. 
Glad to have you. Yeah. Yeah, well, we love, we love this. We love getting together. We love uh, hearing from you guys, too. So if at any point, you know, you've got something to say, please just shout it out. Let us know what you're thinking about. Uh, and, and if you guys have ideas and things like that, we're open to that, too, because uh, you guys are just as big a part of this as anybody, and we, we love getting feedback. So let us know. Also... If you're, if you're uh, um, able to do this, I don't know who's watching this. If there's anybody watching this on our site, Acrylic University, and you're not able to see the chat, make sure you go to, uh, I have a link right below the video that will take you directly to the YouTube uh, place. We, we know that some people, um, if you're watching on a computer, you should be fine. You should be able to chat on our site with the embedded video that's there. But... If you're on a mobile device, that might not work. So, go straight to YouTube and there you'll be able to access the, the stream and your chat will work. But, if you've got ideas, if you have questions, you know, stuff like that, just shout it out. We're gonna be, we're gonna be here all night. <laughs> um, Alejandro Gos. Goss, I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce that. Okay, Alejandro. Um, it says, I've been working with pastels for 10 years. I sell some at Edmonds too, but what attracted me to your paintings is the light, and I want to see how you do it. I just bought some acrylics. Oh, sweet. Well, this is the place for acrylics right here. We're uh, glad to have you. Mm -hmm. So, you, you can see that I start on a black background. I... I start on a black background, not not in every painting uh, by any means, but but I do like to do it. And um, I think I just realized I need to move this over just a smidgen here. Let's see, I kind of screwed that up. But I start on a black background. Um, it it actually the reason I'm bringing it up right now is because you were asking about light, mm -hmm. and um, I I like to control where the light comes from and. How much of it is in there and if you started on a pure white background of course it would be like light everywhere here it's like dark everywhere and so then I only put the light where I want it to be and that's why well well that's one of the reasons that I like painting on a dark surface the other reason is that it's backwards and I learned like it was one of the first ways that I had success painting and I, I was like oh that's cool like I like that um, and the other last reason is because it reminds me of the journey of my life going from um, struggling with addiction and hopelessness and despair and um, finding that um, there was a God that cared and uh, gave me hope. And so anyways, it reminds me of like the darkness of my life and how light came into my life. Um, so it's just a good reminder. It's, I think it's good for, for us to remember that we are fragile, frail people. At least for me, I am very tend to forget the things that I need to remember the most sometimes. Um, and uh, so, you know, we do things out of habit and it's becoming more and more of a habit for me to paint on, on a dark surface and I love it. So those are the reasons. Um, Carol Cho, hello from your friend in Warm Beach. All right, Carol. Good to have you. It's fun. It's fun. You know, one of the things that I've enjoyed um, a ton about being an artist is um, being able to get to know people and then develop relationships that you can you can you can have for years. You know, like you become friends and you. So I don't know how many times now I've been able to see Carol and over the years she's bought paintings different times and become somebody like I, I actually have her phone number programmed into my phone so I know when she calls and stuff like that. I remember being back in Indianapolis and she called and uh, I think that was when I first programmed her phone number into my phone but yeah it's, it's pretty fun. Over time, you get to know people, and now with Acrylic University, I feel like that's expanded even more because there's so many more people that we we get connected to. 
Sally from Snoqualmie. Um, Allison Burst asks, how many paintings are you planning for the show? Well, shoot, Allison, that's a good question. How many paintings? <laughs> I think that I generally try to get about 25 paintings done for this show. And um, so that's, that's kind of my goal. And I think sometimes I, do, I don't do a very good job of planning. And I end up like at the last minute, you know, scrambling around and that's what I'm trying to avoid a little bit this year. <laughs> um, but yeah, some, some number that would be close to 20, 25 would be my goal. It's kind of, it's not, I guess it is kind of my big, my biggest show of the year. I have a show that's on right now at Cole Gallery. Um, yeah, and, a couple people stop by to see it. Yeah, that's super, super fun. Um, and, and that's been going great. I'm super excited about that. But um, that one was about half the number of paintings um, that I needed to get done for that one. So this, the one that's coming up is, you know, significantly more. Um... Hi, Greg from South Florida, AU member and big fan. Greg, awesome. Is that, man, I feel like, Greg, you've been with us from the very beginning. I I feel like, uh, I feel like mm -hmm. some of the early, early comments, maybe even before we switched over to the new platform, I remember you <laughs> being on there. <laughs> you can correct me if I'm wrong, but... I feel. He says, yep, it's true. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's uh. So I have man, it's kind of cool right now. We're doing some cool stuff. Um, we're talking about, um, like we're we're, man. I I don't know how much. Sometimes I feel like I t I want to tell people too much. I can, I probably can't tell you too much about what we're planning right now, hmm. until I get a little further down the road, but. <laughs> But we've got some cool stuff in the works and I'm really excited about the potential that we have. But I can't say any more, so don't even ask. Big plans. Big plans. Cool stuff. Big, big plans. One of my favorite paintings that I did in a plein air competition was um, I was in this little town in northern Indiana, and uh, I think the town is called Converse, not related to the shoes, <laughs> but uh, a really cute little town, like super cool. And um, I, I was looking for a place to paint, because I'd been painting kind of, uh, let me just think about this, I drove up early in the morning, I got up there and I was... I, I didn't know where to go and so I was driving around and I I just kept like coming across beautiful beautiful scenes and stuff that that was like really really cool looking and but I I was like man the sun was coming up and I was just I didn't have time to capture everything so I was just driving around taking pictures I was like man there's so many cool things here and the sun was creating this really gorgeous hazy feel in the sky it was kind of surreal it was really an interesting morning and um but where i ended up after like you know wasting and kind of wasting time but kind of also getting lots of really good photographs um i but i was i was wasting time considering that the the competition was happening it was like this you know one day competition and so i hadn't painted anything yet and uh I finally found this house that was um, like it, it was like a cool old house and next to a parking lot. It was kind of this interesting like there was a business right next to it but I could see inside the, the house like over the, the fence on the side of the fence that they had this really cool um, yard and you know like they had this these flowers sitting on the back deck and I was like man I wonder if I could just sit here in this 
parking lot kind of area and paint what I see over the fence. And so I just set up my canvas and stuff, my easel right there, and I just started, you know, kind of kind of painting along and eventually like a woman came out and I started talking to her and you know we we kind of talked most of the morning like it seemed like quite a bit and um I was just she was came out and looked at the, what I was doing you know all that kind of stuff and then um I went and uh I turned my painting in and uh but it, it reminds me a little bit of this because it was kind of like this white house in the shadow with these flowers that were sitting there and there was a carpet kind of hanging over a banister it was really cool and uh anyways i ended up winning that competition with that little painting and and she ended up buying the painting from me which was pretty cool but it was kind of funny because she asked if she could buy it and i was like oh of course you can and then i i said um she asked how much it would be and I gave her the price and she's like, oh, I don't really want to do that. And and then like um, a week later, she called or like maybe a couple days later, she called me and she said, well, I really want, do want to buy that painting. And I said, oh, okay, well, that's great. And she said, you didn't tell me that you won the competition. <laughs> and I guess like because it had won, then the value of it to her had gone up quite a bit in her mind. So she was willing to pay. <laughs> it was kind of funny, but I was happy to, that she ended up with it because it's always fun to see somebody who like knows and cares end up with a painting. Um, a couple people are asking where your show in October is going to be. Oh, my show in October is in a, uh, at Sunny Shore Studio and uh, on Kameno Island. And um, that's actually my brother's studio. Uh, so it's a family kind of family place, I guess you could say. My brother is an artist and uh, they have, he and his family have a have a beautiful, beautiful um, studio slash gallery slash like it's kind of like a working studio. It has an apartment above it. Um, and what's cool about it is that I don't know if they're doing it currently right now, but they have in the past and they, I know they're planning to again in the future, but you can rent the studio and you can like be stay there and do art, you know, and stuff like that. Um, and the, the coolest thing about it, the way that they kind of had it set up, and I don't want to speak for them, but if they, if they do it again, um, I, I just thought it was such a cool thing because basically what they did was you could go there and you could stay and instead of paying um, like just, well, here's, you know, it's $120 a nine or whatever it would be, they would let you buy artwork for the amount that you had stayed so like you just fig tally up the the time that you'd stayed there and figure out however much you know the uh, the dollar amount would be and then you could basically pay that and take artwork that was equivalent to the amounts or get credit for that much you know and then pay the pay the balance which I just thought was a really really cool idea because you, you know it's kind of like supporting two things um, at the same time, you're helping people, you know, sometimes people want a getaway to go paint and then you're also helping the artists of the gallery, which primarily is, uh, you know, our family, but, um, Jason also has other artists that show there. And so it's just a cool, it's a cool, it, it was a pretty cool arrangement. So if you're ever in the Seattle area and you want to find a getaway yeah I could probably hook you up with something that would be pretty awesome I think my parents still have a coupon or something oh do they that. yeah <laughs> yeah that's fun okay I'm gonna start 
working on getting some of the some of the light into some of these places. Um, there's some reflected light that's coming from back here, and I need to I need to work on this just a little bit because I need these poles to be three dimensional. What I love about you know what I love about painting and and if you're if you're around you know what I what I think is so cool about it is like it's so much just observation right I mean when you're painting outside it, it becomes really apparent that you know you can't rely on you you kind of just have to look and look and look and look and look and and then mix the color that you think it is and um, you can't hide really if you're if you haven't developed some of the skills, you know, like it can be kind of intimidating, it can be kind of scary, but at the same time, it, 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 can, it can be liberating because um, I know a lot of people who have, I've found that like the constraints of time and all that stuff actually help them paint better. And I feel like when you're outside and you don't have maybe the luxury of a lot of time or different things like that you just have to rely on observing these things and it can actually be like really um really cool and you, you get way better than you think you or you know you prove yourself to be a better artist than you thought you were so what are you guys up to this weekend i'm going for a hike tomorrow what are you guys doing tomorrow? I'm also going to play basketball with Julian because he's going to come up. He's my nephew. We're going to go for the hike, but he's also bringing his basketball shoes up. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's going to be so fun. Um, We've had some good battles over the years. I'm sure you have. Um, so you were talking about that one buyer that bought your winning painting yeah and was willing to pay more because it was a winning painting yeah. or whatever like that um so somebody said Alejandro Fine Art um said buyers are weird sometimes yeah and I asked if they had any crazy buyer stories oh okay <laughs> and they said um the most common thing is when you're in the opening of the show and a buyer comes and tells you that they want a painting so the gallery owner goes to get that painting ready to go then the buyer asks is that artist worth that amount <laughs> oh. and, uh, apparently that happens pretty commonly for really owners. that's then, weird yeah and then Allison says I guess I buy it because I like it not because it's or not because whether or not it's worth it yeah my my take on art has always been man like buy what you love you know and and why buy stuff that you're not inter like if you're not really that crazy about it you know i mean i guess there's different reasons to buy art and some people buy it as an investment or something like that but to me it's kind of crazy to do that i if i don't want to look at it i don't really want it on my wall yeah and i think what's interesting too about some of that is like your you, the gallery owner can is actually so influential to that um, to the buyer, right? If the gallery owner is convincing enough and says, "Yes, this person is totally worth that yeah. amount," then all of yeah, a sudden, yeah, yeah. you know, the person's like, "Oh, awesome! Look at this painting I got." They don't know anything. They don't even know, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Um. So we got a few people say what they're doing over the weekend. Okay. Um, Alejandro Finer says kayaking to Jetty Island with my puppy. Nice. That sounds awesome. <laughs> um, Dennis Redmond says painting with friends. Oh, cool. That's um, fun. David Schwar says disc golf. Nice. Um, I love disc golf. I used to play with my dad all the time. I miss that. For Corona. Um... So, wait, David Schwartz. Schwartz. Schwartz, okay. Where are you from? David, you can answer that in a minute. 
Peter, you can keep going. Um, okay, uh, Martha Tanner says, I'm going to visit some Amish folks. Maybe paint. That would be fun. Yeah. Um, and Allison says, canning pickled okra and painting a sign for a wedding. That sounds fun. Wow, P painting a sign for a wedding? Yeah. That's interesting. I'd like to hear what, what do you mean like painting a sign? I've, I've never, I mean, I'm just trying to imagine what you're talking about. Um, Janice says groceries with a mask on. Um, John L's mom says meeting my parents. So, oh yeah. Yeah, tomorrow night. That'll be fun. Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, Zerka says, hi, Hurricane Laura is showing her thunderous wrath today and Akron, Ohio. Whoa. Still light conditions today. Whoa. That's crazy. I hope you're staying safe. Yeah, my, uh, we were actually, my mom was asking, we were, uh, talking about our, my niece who's in Georgia and we were wondering if she had, you know, experienced any of the, any of the conditions or anything different because of it. And I, I haven't, I actually talked to her today and I didn't ask anything about that, but yeah, it's crazy how far it can, it can go, you know, and just affect so wide of a range of an area. Um, did, um, yeah, David responded. Yeah. Yeah, he says from Chicago. Oh, okay. Well, what, well, the reason I was asking David is because I I used to know David Schwartz, um, and I think the spelling was probably different. I don't, I can't remember exactly how his was spelled. So that's why I was asking because I was like, wait a second, are you from Indianapolis? Because uh, if you had said Indianapolis, I would have thought perhaps you were the guy I knew. Allison says a sign that says, or she's painting a sign that says welcome and the names of the bride and groom with the date. Okay, gotcha. Oh, cool. Well, that's cool that they're going to have you make a handmade sign. That's really cool. Yeah. Michael Scoopin. Is that how you say that? Scoopine. Yeah. Uh, says low tide tide fooling. It's a code name yeah. for somebody. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. But um, cool, low tide, tide pooling. Yeah, tomorrow's low tide is in the morning, right? I think Renee was thinking about going to the beach. There's a really, like, the, actually, the, this scene is from a um, coming back from the beach I'm about to talk about. It's, it's a, a really cool beach, and I can't tell you where because I've called it Secret Beach. And that means I can't tell anybody where this is we should film stuff there but not like show anybody where it is. <laughs> exactly i know Make i know it's super cool but here's well i have to say i think it's super cool the funniest thing about it is that renee's gone there like a couple times without me and she says that when the tide is low it it's this incredibly you know amazing beach with sand that stretches out for miles and all this kind of stuff and so like she went there with some friends and they had brought all the kids and and then Renee was all excited about it. so we went back on a date we went back we walked and you have to hike in a little ways I'm not going to tell you where it is but you have to hike in and uh and we get there and there's like no beach at all it was high tide and there was just basically no beach and it was just the water up against the rocks and and so she was like oh my goodness i i can't believe it's like this this is not at all what it's like when we were here and all this kind of stuff so i'm like okay what i can imagine tell me what it's like you know and so she's telling me yeah it's usually like this and this and this and so then like uh probably like three weeks go by and we went back there with uh, she'd gone another time in between and had a really great time there again <laughs> and then we go back with some friends i was i was uh telling my sister actually is my sister and brother-in-law and stuff and i was telling them like how awesome the beach was and we go back and we looked at the tide but because we were kind of waiting for them we weren't able to get going quite as fast as we were planning to originally and so 
Anyways, we go back and it's, it wasn't the high tide yet, but it was coming in fast. And when we were going in, we, I knew I'm like, oh no, people were, we were passing people. Um, because when the tide comes in, they, they leave. So I've never been to the beach when it's really low and a super amazing beach, but I'm still not going to tell you where it is or anything. <laughs> people are asking. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can yeah. ask and you can guess, but... Like a kid on Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas Eve. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. So, we're starting to get to these places where we can get a little bit of... A little bit of light, a little bit of color... Yeah, it's been, it's interesting, um, you know, I, I paint here quite a bit, and I paint um, in lessons quite a bit, and sometimes I've found that I, I end up not painting as much on my own, kind of for things, and, and it's only when I have some reason to paint, like a commission, you know, like that I, that I do it or, or like a show like this. So it's kind of good that I have that kind of stuff or else I'd probably just, um, just paint in, <laughs> in lessons and stuff and, yeah. and never do anything beyond that. But it's fun to paint. The reason I like painting, I, I love painting on this type of thing because it's really fun to interact. And I actually find that yeah, I used to probably be more nervous. I actually find it kind of relaxes me to to paint and to talk with people and to interact. It's kind of weird, but it's kind of nice for me. Oh, Jan says, I'm so jealous of the outdoor activities. It's been so smoky with the Northern California wildfires. Air quality isn't healthy. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, man, how are those going? Because I know my sister actually just went down to yeah. where'd they go? L.A. or some somewhere pretty close, and uh, they were trying to figure out the best path. Remember, Peter? I don't know if I told you that they went down, but I, I, I was talking to them, and it just totally reminded me of last year yeah, when we were same. trying to get down. I was like. <sighs> Oh man, these flowers are beautiful. Yeah, they are. Okay. Just enough sunlight, right, to, to make these flowers really stand out. Hey, Jeff, what colors are you using? Oh. This is titanium white. This is cadmium yellow. This is cadmium orange. This is quinacridone red. This is ultramarine blue, Mars black, and a neutral gray. Um, yeah. By the way, if you haven't done this, you can text the word patio to uh, the number. It's also scrolling across the, uh, the bottom of the screen all night, so if you miss it here. Um, and that will enter you in to win a Blick $50 gift card. So, make sure you do that if you want some incredible art supplies. And I'll also mention that next week on September 3rd, I'm going to be doing a live thing on Blick Art's uh, Facebook page. Um, if you want to go there, that's going to happen at 4 o'clock Central Time. So that'd be like 2 o'clock Pacific Time. Um, but 
I'm doing a live thing and it's going to be kind of highlighting uh, Liquitex, some Liquitex products and so that'll be fun. Do you know about that, Peter? <laughs> just, just making sure. Know about what? The live stream Sorry. next week with uh, uh, Blick. Yeah, I know you know about it. I was just I teasing. Think it's on my calendar. I hope so. <laughs> Cause you're supposed to be here. Yeah. Oh, Dang, so man. Okay. Play. I need to do a little bit of. Yo, what? We need to do a little bit of what? Or not? Not we don't. Nothing we need to do, but next week, next Saturday, we have the meet and greet. Oh, yeah. For like University meet Yeah, and we greet. do. Yeah. That's going to be fun. So if you're part of Acrylic University, we're going to be getting together, and you would know some of the details right now already. But um, if you're able to, we know that a lot of people don't live close enough or have the ability to travel right now. But... Um, we're hoping that this could become something that we do regularly on an annual basis and just have an actual physical get together that would make our uh, relationships grow even stronger and feel like we know each other even better um, than when um, you know we we're interacting online and stuff like that. We'll have a face and you know kind of be able to be able to think about a, a real person who's the person who's behind it so if you're able to make that that's going to be happening happening on September 5th I believe that's the date that's the Saturday and uh, it's going to be a really good time Um, Christine Anderson uh, asks what the date and time is for the Blick event. The Blick event is um, it's September 3rd and it is at 2 o'clock Pacific time, 5 o'clock Eastern time, and 4 o'clock Central time, which is their time because they are based out of Illinois. Yeah, you got to keep track of a lot of different times, you know, like we're all coming from different places, aren't we? Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting. Yep. So one of the things that I think I'll just point this out since I think it's interesting is that what color would you say these, um, all the trim is on this house um, most of us would say it's white right like the trim is white um, like instinctively we know that that's white trim and if we were in a room with trim you know that was white we we'd say it's white trim and the trick is that when we paint it um, we have to do the work of letting our eyes tell us and not our brains. Because our brains are, are really good at categorizing things and making really quick decisions. And the, the, the downfall, the, the good thing about that is that like, it's good for survival and it's good for you know, eating food and like staying away from the wrong <laughs> kinds of things sometimes like um, you know, we can sense danger or things like that. Like we will, we'll like say, oh, okay, I know that that's, you know, whatever, like, and, and we'll make these really quick decisions with our, with our brains. Like our brains will just go, okay, that, I know what that is. I don't need to think about that anymore. I know what that is. But the problem is, is that when we're painting those categories fall short because it'll just say, Oh, okay, that's a tree. I already know what a tree looks like. Trees are green, trees are brown, trees are this. And end of story, I'm going to move on to something else that's maybe going to kill me, right? I'm going to think about that for a while. That's kind of what our brains want to do. And you can see that there's a little bit of an upward um, 
slope here on this and I I'm trying to kind of keep this um, accurate to the to the photo um, so I have to adjust some of these lines a little bit down here but in painting we don't want to allow our brains to make all those decisions for us we really need to go okay what color am I going to paint what color are those that that those trim boards what what color are they actually like not just I know that the paint if I went to the store I'd order white paint but when I'm looking at this what color are those beams what color is that that board going up over there you know and we have to make better decisions than just saying it's white because white is not going to look at all like what we want it to if I got pure white out you know it would screw the whole painting up if I started putting that in uh, the places where this trim is but our brain sometimes if we're not careful will actually fool us and say oh yeah that's that's white over there let's get out the white and let's let's make it all white and um, so just as a little word of kind of like observation uh, make sure that you're paying attention and like really looking because those things will throw you off pretty big Ooh, we have somebody from India. All right. Awesome. Who is it? Um, they have a username or something. Oh, okay. Swarangali or something. Oh, okay. It's, it's just one word, so I'm assuming it's a username. Gotcha. Um. Welcome. Welcome Her all the way Shika. from... Okay, Shika. All right. Welcome nice to have Shika. you. Yeah. Um... Somebody asks, Jed, did you sketch for millions of years with pencil before you so confidently sketch out proportionately with paint? Um, I don't know if I so confidently sketch <laughs> out anything. I'm a... Uh, um, but... I mean, when I was when I was growing up, you know, I mean, I, I sketched a fair amount. Um, I'm trying to think, like, how much how much would a lot be because I mean I definitely have and I think that I've kind of like in some ways I, I've wrapped my head around um, certain things like perspective a little bit like I understand it at least um, I, I might not do it perfectly but I, I get the concept and I know kind of what I'm trying to um, do or like if something you know like I hate using the word should it's like one of our family rules not to use the word should because <laughs> I, I anyways won't go into that but um, but I, I I guess I know enough of the rules that make me kind of like know if I'm doing something totally wrong I'll probably catch it and maybe that gives me a little bit of confidence but here's the other thing I've realized over time is that you don't have to have everything perfect um, I think a lot of times we get in, we feel like we need to get everything totally totally perfect and it can be really scary and really kind of like intimidating and if you're if you really pay attention to the way that I paint you'll notice that I there's a lot of stuff that is not perfect I mean there's a lot of stuff that's like oh huh he's just gonna leave that whoa interesting I would have like fix that I would have you know done done something else there that kind of thing and um, I think that what I've what I've kind of realized over time is that you need to be accurate but you don't need to be perfect mm -hmm. you you need to be kind of convincing but you don't need to try to replicate a photograph that that's kind of like the 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 principle that that I would say is like so what what exactly does that mean what do you need to put in what do you need to leave out what do you you know I, and that's that's a little bit of a 
you know, like what you kind of have to figure out on your own a little bit, but, um, like it's probably not quite as much as you might think. And, and if you don't have to put in every detail, it, it's, it's a lot, it's pretty freeing because then all of a sudden you don't have to, you know, like, okay, so I just painted that wall and I mean, I'm going to do a few more things, but, um, you know, it's, it's not all there. It's not all perfect. It's not, you know, the, the most amazing thing in the world, but it, does it look like a wall? Yeah, it kind of looks like a wall, right? Like, do I need to do a little bit more? Sure. I, I can do some more and I can make it better. And I actually forgot to put in the door over here, stuff like that. But, um, I know because I've painted enough, I think it's more about the analogy that I like to use is if you were new to a city and, and you, you like, you had the job of, okay, you have to go to the store and get the milk, you know, or whatever, you know, you need to go to the store and get whatever, you know, for our dinner tonight. Well, and you're just walking or you're driving or whatever. Um, you being brand new to the city, you have no idea where you're going and it's, it might take you a little bit longer to get there. Um, it might, you might miss the turn, you know, like who knows what's going to happen that first time. But, um, the second time you're going to have a better chance of doing it third time, fourth, fifth. You've lived there for six years. You don't ever have to even think about where you're going, right? Like all of a sudden, you know where the store is, you know where everything is, you know how long it's going to take you to get there. You know the shortcut to get there. You know what happens if you get off track for some strange reason and you know you find yourself in a different part of town you know how to get back and I think that that's kind of the way it is with art for me is like I'm not I don't consider myself to be this, this anything great as an artist I, I I really think my I'm kind of like a normal guy and I have normal skills and but you know what I've done I've painted a lot I've just been down the road a lot. And so, yeah, you get, you get a fair amount of confidence from being down the road a hundred, you know, a yeah. thousand times, right? Like, it's like, yeah. well, I know that if I screw this up, for one thing, if I screw the whole thing up, I just paint over it or I, you know, like I'm not that caught up and worried about it. But the other thing is like, I know that if I get this wrong down here, it's not that hard to to kind of come back and change it right and so i just think that that's where the confidence comes is i've been down the road a ton whether it's sketching um i don't know if it's so much j j because it's from sketching it's more like just the general principle of painting and i know that if this gets messed up i can fix it i can come back i can do something but that's a really good question. I, I'm glad you asked. Um, Marie says, the faster we screw up, the faster we learn. Yeah. And um, John L's mom says, I wish I had an art teacher tell me that when I was younger. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's totally true. I mean, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of things that if we just are not afraid, um, I think will grow really a lot faster than if we're scared of whatever it is. Oops. Dorina says, I love the idea of being accurate, but not perfect. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely freeing if you, if you can, if you can embrace it because then you know, like who's perfect? Like none of us are perfect. And, yeah. uh, it's like really nice to know that you don't have to be. It's okay. Okay, and over here is kind of interesting. I, I need to bring some lighter shades into the foreground. Um, 
like into these things because there's a little bit of light hitting this up here and there's also some light coming through on these um, leaves in the pots but this area is actually still really pretty dark over there oh you know what I forgot to bring out tonight was my phthalo blue I'll stick this over here just in case I want it reason I was thinking about it was because I didn't have I was just thinking about the color of this grass down here and thinking I wonder what I should mix in and if I want a really vibrant green I'll probably grab some of that phthalo because that's gonna create a very different green So what are the what are the things that are, you know, for you who are painting and and doing stuff? Um hey, by the way, I should say hi to my mother-in-law, Edie. I don't know if you're out there, Edie, but if you are, hey, how you doing? Hope that you're having a good evening. But for those of you who are painting, and uh, what are the things, or, or doing art, or interested, you know, like what are the things that are maybe perplexing you, or have kind of got you stuck, or have you feeling like, I don't really know how to move forward in this way. You know, it could be a little thing, it could be a bigger thing. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter, just, I'd love to hear kind of what are the, what are the things that are holding you back, or making it hard right now. Um, I know there's a lot of things that can get us. It could be even just, you know, discouragement or no time. It could be I'm struggling with, like, figuring out how to do this. Um, Edie says, oh, yeah, I'm here enjoying the show. Oh, cool. And then um, with regards to your question, I actually hit the chat one. <laughs> What'd you do? I oh, you hit it? it. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, Allison says, I struggle going between painting pets where I have to be accurate uh, and other things where I don't have to be. Yeah. Yeah, those are two totally different things, aren't they, right? Because it's like a commission for somebody who wants their pet painted, which they want it to look like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Um, Janice Wallman says, need help with color mixing. Um... Jackie yeah. says, laying down brush strokes versus blending. Okay. Um, Colleen Brown, learning to loosen up is a struggle. Um, Maureen says, mixing cold or warm colors slash adding light. Um, Laura okay. Hazeltine says, I've been in a rut all summer. Yeah. What do you feel that's about, Laura? And so, Janice, you said color mixing. And... Uh, I, I've been thinking about color mixing quite a bit because, you know, last fall we did Color 101. We, we created that course and uh, I, I, we had reached out to um, people and asked what were their pressing questions on color and we'd gotten 300 questions and I, we just asked some more people um, the same thing and so we got about another over 100 more questions and um, so I've been kind of like thinking about color and thinking is that is is color mixing still something that you would like more instruction on or, or like yeah. to get some just some something that would be like yeah that that really helps me kind of like figure it out at a deeper level is that something that there's a need for um, Laura, Laura Azeltein says, I wish I knew. And then she said, um, just being too worried about what others, others think of my artwork. Ah, uh, yeah, I get that. It's always debilitating. Um, a couple people. 
said, improving my brush strokes and palette knife skills would be key. Um, lots of people saying yes in the color mixing. Uh, okay. More help with that. More instruction. Um, okay. Um, Janet Baker says, I struggle to even start because there are many things in need of my time. It's a matter of time management and prioritization. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard sometimes when you got different things that are pulling at you to know. And I think, how many of you find that you paint less in the summer? I'm, that'd be an interesting thing. Because yeah. I know that I've heard from quite a few people, you know, I don't, I don't paint as much in the summer. It's really in the winter when I have to be inside more or, you know, you don't have to, but it's, it's not as easy to be outside and maybe there's not as much stuff to do because you're not doing yard work and things like that uh, in the winter time as much. Is that, is that, is that something that you would you know, um, kind of think? A couple people said seeing colors value. Ted Van Dyken says, Ted here, finding something to paint, finding the right subject with the right light, etc. Yeah. How many people um, um, have like spent hours looking at mm. subject matter like yeah. you have lots of stuff to kind of choose from but you just spend time like looking and looking and looking and looking and never actually making a decision to do anything <laughs> i know that i'll i'll do that sometimes sometimes i i have to I, it's not as bad now because i have to do more and so i i usually tend to make decisions faster but still sometimes i can find myself just delaying and you know kind of just this endless looking looking <laughs> never making a decision and just painting something mm -hmm. I've done that with drawing have you yeah for sure um, <laughs> Martha Tanner says yes I feel torn between enjoying the summer and painting the summer yeah yeah Um, Alejandro Finer says, I find it hard to paint in the winter gloomy weather. When it's warm, I want to go out and play in air. Oh, okay, yeah. So the opposite, kind of. Yeah. Well, definitely, if you're, if you're into painting outside, I mean, when it's nice out, that's, that's kind of the time to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm finding that this, I was just saying this to, to uh, Renee today, actually, I think, and then I was talking to our, a friend who's a great artist, and, and she's, uh, well, she was coming back, it's actually Diana Shine, she was on her way back from painting somewhere outside today, and I was like, oh man, looking down, she was saying at the, the um, Columbia Gorge, there probably close to Portland um, where they live and uh, I was thinking oh man that sounds so fun because I, ha I haven't been out painting as much um, this summer as I would have liked so I'm, I'm hoping that I can I don't know squeeze some time in here in the next little while we've still got we've still got time though you know like fall here is really nice and yeah. It's not uh it's not like we're pressed completely for time right now. Mm. But I am going to uh Indianapolis here in a bit and I'm probably gonna paint outside with some friends there. That's gonna be fun. Looking forward to that. Nancy Worrell says, I struggle with vibrancy. I'm using the same paints as you and your painting seems so much more vibrant than mine. Well that's because you haven't um 
you haven't chosen the vibrant the vibrancy brush I have a special brush called the vibrancy brush and uh, whenever I use it it brings a special sparkle and I I never share that with anybody because it's my little tiny secret <laughs> uh, just joking well you know I think sometimes um, perception isn't always reality too like I mean I, I actually have to work quite a bit to to get sparkle into paintings and vibrancy into paintings and sometimes it's um, you know like one of the things like as Peter was reading this I started I was just looking at this and thinking you know I, I need to bring the values up a little bit in this painting overall um, I need to do a, a, yeah just a little bit of work on that because right now it's it's a little bit dark for what it needs to be um, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna try I'm gonna do my best but that's the kind of thing that you know you paint and you you put stuff down and then you evaluate it and uh, sometimes what you chose to do you know was right spot on and sometimes it wasn't and um, I don't know I, I just I just think that so often painting and life and all sorts of things is really just about not giving up and just keeping keeping moving forward like Nancy I know that you're I think you're a tremendously gifted artist and I I think that your paintings do have a, a nice sparkle to them and you know so I think sometimes our perception is not that good of our own work you know I, I don't I've never met anybody that I, I, I come across a lot of people who are down on themselves and then they show me what they're working on or something and I always see great potential so Christine Anderson says, this summer I've been doing quick 20 minute paintings early in the morning and I know I've learned from it. Oh, cool. That's really fun. Yeah, yeah I think that that's a good idea, like things like that to uh, kind of, they can kind of, it can kind of shake you up a little bit, get you out of maybe a funk or, you know, and I've always felt like the idea of painting smaller paintings is good because there's less pressure with a small painting you feel like you know if it doesn't turn out you didn't invest that much time um, and uh, you know you're easier to make decisions it, it's it's a really great way to learn and to grow and to try new things Bev says his vibrancy brush was handmade by tree fairies with bristle made from butterfly antenna. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's exact. I now, that was a secret, Bev. That was not supposed to be shared. So <laughs> now there's a chance that somebody else could get one if they find those fairies. Yeah. You know, it's 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 kind of funny. I was actually thinking about it today because I'm I'm doing an ad. You guys will have to look for it in uh, the in Plain Air magazine um, coming up. It's going to be more like an article than an ad. But um, anyways, it's a uh, I've been thinking about ads a bit and thinking about like you know, and I was just thinking about how sometimes I I feel like. Well, I, I'm not selling a product like like um, like some tool or something like that, like a brush or anything like that. But I was thinking about that because that's a lot of things that are sometimes advertised are like some kind of tool or something like that. And and I was thinking how it's so easy for us to think that oh I can't do this because I don't have the right 
tool, you know, I don't have, the, that was why I was joking about that is because it's like, oh, well, you don't have the special fairy brush, you know, but if I, if you pay me money, I'll send you a special copy of my fairy brush. And, you know, we think that that's the key, but really, like, man, it's, the reason that I want to encourage people in painting and stuff so much is because I think that most of it is like just not giving up and keeping on working at it and, and um, persevering even when you think that something didn't go quite as well as you wanted. Yeah. It, that's true for a lot of things in life. Yeah. Okay, so the good thing about this painting tonight, I'm just realizing, is that because because I'm not giving this painting away, I don't feel as much pressure to try to get it totally done. Like, I can just kind of say I'm done at any point and I'll be done and then I can work on it later. But I still want to bring a little bit more light in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this area up here uh, about as dark as it is. And I'm going to bring a little bit more because there's a little bit more reflected light down on the bottom half of this wall. So that's my plan is we'll see what happens if I make this lower section a little bit lighter. Um, so Jackie Stock is one of our new members. Awesome, Jackie. Glad you're here. Yeah, she says, signed up with Jed for lessons because I saw he lived in Indianapolis and supported tech. I'm Naptown born and bred. Felt like the right thing oh, to do. Oh, that's ready. awesome. Yeah. Um, felt like the right thing to do and finally ready to take lessons for painting. That's so cool. Well, you know, we're coming back to, to Indy. Um, I'm going to be there in September in about two weeks. In fact, in two weeks, I'll be in, I'll be in Indy, and we're going to do a, a work project there. Uh, I talked about it last weekend, but, or last Friday, but we've got a friend who has a house that uh, needs some work to finish it up, and we're going to try our best to do whatever needs to be done. You know, no guarantees that we'll be able to finish it right now, but that's the goal. So that's going to be fun. Now, who is that? Who did you say that was? Uh, Jackie Stock. Jackie, okay. Yeah. Well, Jackie, that's really cool. At least I think that's how you say her name. It's, it's J-A-C-Q-U-I-E. Yeah, I think that's right. Yes. Um, she says her 95-year-old mom went to tech. I'm in Seattle now. Oh, you're in Seattle. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. Tech, okay, so... Those of you who don't know what tech is, Arsenal Tech High School is the school that I worked at. I, I, I didn't work for the school, but I worked for Young Life at the school. And uh, I worked with high school kids. It was, it was really, uh, man, it just like one of the best experiences of my life. I will never forget that. And I'll never, um, I'll never be able to kind of repay those kids because I felt like I got more out of that than they did and um and I just love them so much like they're they're very very precious to me and um 
it's kind of cool because they they uh, I still keep in contact. I was actually talking to one of the kids. Oh man, he's so crazy. He's um, she's how old is he? He's probably 23 or 24. He's he's been working for Cat. Uh, he's a diesel mechanic and he's been working there since high school because he got, he did this kind of. So Arsenal Tech is a technical, it was like a technical school. It was one of the biggest high schools in America in the 1950s. And um, it's, it's um, built on a kind of what was that? Well, an arsenal. Yeah, I was thinking it's in the name, Jed. Just say the name. <laughs> it was a Civil War arsenal. Um, and And so it's like, then, then when they weren't using it as that anymore, they, they turned it into a school. And so it's just got this really cool legacy and history there in the city. Like so many people went there. You get on the, um, the uh, alumni pages and stuff and it's just, a, it's really cool. There's tons of people from there. And uh, anyway, Seth is like, he went through one of the technical programs and got hired right away into Cat. He was working there as a senior, um, doing this, you know, good work and um, making okay money. And he's been just, but he's like always, a, he's a very driven, kind of uh, motivated guy. He was the, whatever the second highest, is that salutatorian? That was what he was in his grade. And he's, um, he's now like, he just bought a house. He's got his eyes on like several businesses that he's trying to get going like on in his spare time. He's, oh, just like, he's telling me all these things today. And I'm like, man, whoa, you're doing a lot of cool stuff. Like what, you know, what's motivating you? And he's just, He's just highly motivated guy, and uh, so anyways, it's fun though for me to be able to keep in contact with some of them. I, I miss I miss seeing a lot of them because I mean I just don't get to talk to them as much as I would like, and you know that kind of thing. But it's definitely really fun when I do get the chance to to talk to somebody, and so that was one of my highlights today was talking to Seth. And then we're kind of planning how we can see each other when, when I'm back. Because that'll be really fun. And I know that there's usually several people here with us who work in schools and stuff like that. Well, of course, Laura's an art teacher. And I, I know I'm thinking that um, maybe Allison, too, works with this school. can't remember. Might be some other people, too. Okay, so let's see. Now, there's still some work to do on those flowers and um, I'm gonna try to do a little bit here and then I'll be wrapping up pretty quickly. So let's go into these flowers a little bit. And if you can, while you're with us, if you can just, if you're on the YouTube uh, site, you might have to be there to be able to do this, but if you can just like this video, you know, that'd be awesome. We appreciate that. I should have left that one darker. Um, Heather 
Bruce asks, do you use a fresh sheet on paper on your stay wet palette every time you paint? Nope. Now this is a pretty old one. Yeah. Pretty old one for sure. Um, sometimes I, I, I mean, I generally, like earlier today, I, I cleaned it, um, but I didn't, I didn't change it out. So I think that there's a couple funny things like right here I feel like this angle is a little bit off and I it's, it's a, probably it's kind of hard for me to see it um, but I see it in the I'm gonna go like this and just kind of do a little something there probably fix that later. I think it needs to go up a little bit. Okay, so I think, guys, I'm going to be wrapping her up. So make sure that if you have not and you want to get that um, uh, gift card for Blick Art Materials, text PATIO to 855-588-4278, and we'll get that over to you. Um, I mean, if you win. <laughs> we'll, we'll choose. We'll choose a winner <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. All you have to do is text in your number. And that will enter you, I need to say. Yep. Who's not looking forward to uh, the US election? <laughs> Me. I just get worn out. That's why I don't really talk about politics, but it's tiring. When do you want to draw? When? Right now. Do it. Right now? Go for it. Okay. Yeah. Peter is rolling the dice. He's drawing the numbers right now. And if your name is... No. He'll text you. That's how it works, guys. You've been here before. If you haven't, welcome to this first time that you're here. Glad that you're here. Do do. And these are just happy little plants down here. Happy little plants. I need to turn on my Bob Ross. <laughs> I've always thought, you know, like, am I the anti-Bob Ross? Because I'm bald and he had so much hair? Is that what you'd call me? But then that sounds so negative. <laughs> so I'm not anti-Bob Ross. Oh. Am I the oxymoron of Bob Ross? <laughs> Am I, but, but then that sounds bad because it, well, for one, the word moron is in there. And the other reason is because that would kind of mean maybe I'm negative about things. And he was so positive, like maybe I'm Mr. Negativity here. Well, that doesn't seem quite right. I don't want to be Mr. Negative. Okay, looks like Peter's getting an answer. I don't know, but he's sounding positive over there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna text you got him. something? Okay. He's sending a text right now, so if you're watching, make sure you're checking your phone just to see if you get a text. Because we like to give this to people who are actually sticking with us the whole time. I think you might just get rid of that one. John L says alternate uh, alternate dimension Bob Ross. <laughs> alternate dimension Bob Ross. That's funny. Alternate 
alternate dimension. <laughs> That's great. Okay, check your phones, everybody. Peter's getting word back, maybe right now. Maybe not, but he will be soon. Yep, got word back. Just bring what their name is, and then we're gonna announce them on Okay, the cool. It's nearby. It's a, a number that is okay. Nearby. Nice. I know for a fact. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. So $50 gift card coming your way. And once Peter has that thing, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop what I'm doing. No way. Ted Van Dyken. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations, Ted. You're going to get a $50 gift card sent to you. So please uh, make sure you stay on the chat with Peter and give us your address because we'll need that. Uh, to send you the gift card. If you're really close, then maybe we can work out some other arrangement like having it at our studio, but otherwise, send us your address. Everybody, I hope that you have a really, really, really wonderful weekend, and uh, thanks for being here. Remember that we love you, we care about you, and we believe in you, and we hope that you have an awesome, awesome time. I'm gonna be hiking tomorrow, so I'll, I'll be out there. If you think of me, just uh, hope that I don't get eaten by a bear. That's one of my worries and uh, that I don't get lost because that's another thing that I wouldn't want to have happen. And otherwise, I'm going to have a really good time. So I hope that you guys have a good time tomorrow, whatever you're doing, and we'll, we'll check you out next week.